Listen to what Sasha Baron Cohen had to say about some of the negative impacts of social media and the way dishonest political actors have been using it. Today, around the world, demagogues appeal to our worst instincts. Conspiracy theories once confined to the fringe are going mainstream. It's as if the age of reason, the era of evidential argument is ending. And now knowledge is increasingly delegitimized and scientific consensus is dismissed. Democracy, which depends on shared truths, is in retreat and autocracy, which depends on shared lies, is on the march. Hate crimes are surging as are murderous attacks on religious and ethnic minorities. Now, what do all these dangerous trends have in common? I'm just a comedian and an actor, I'm not a scholar, but one thing is pretty clear to me. All this hate and violence is being facilitated by a handful of internet companies that amount to the greatest propaganda machine in history. I, I mean, going in, like I've, I've liked his work for a long time, but going into that speech, which uh, I watched in its entirety, and you totally should, we've got a little bit more. Uh, I was very impressed with his analysis of a number of the intersection of a number of different problems, um, and he's very much right there. In, in a little bit, we're going to show you he goes directly after Mark Zuckerberg, but you already have a basic idea of what he thinks about Facebook, uh, Twitter, and all of that. Okay, first of all, I got to say respect. <laughs> he seems to really understand technology. Uh, okay, oh, old school allergy references, but anyways, uh, no, I love the guy, love him. Uh, so, like, not only is he super smart, which you know, if you've ever seen him speak on the uh, this issue or any other issue, you would know. Uh, but also deeply compassionate. Uh, he gave a million dollars uh, to uh, make sure that refugees were taken care of, Muslim refugees were taken care of, and so the speech here is. Uh, Speaking at an event called Never Is Now for the Anti-Defamation League. So this guy is phenomenal. Now, his indictment of those platforms is a really interesting conversation. We'll get into it in a little bit. But so far, unquestionably interesting, brilliant analysis that is worthy of, of serious debate. Yeah. Yeah, we can say more as we get into it, but clearly he's identified the problem. At this juncture in this conversation, he's identified what is clearly correct, which is that there's a tremendous amount of propaganda being generated on these platforms. Yeah, and like I said, he goes directly after Mark Zuckerberg, so why don't we turn to that now? Let's think about it. Facebook, YouTube, and Google, Twitter, and others, they reach billions of people. The algorithms these platforms depend on deliberately amplify the type of content that keeps users engaged. Stories that appeal to our baser instincts and that trigger outrage and fear. It's why YouTube recommended videos by the conspiracist Alex Jones billions of times. It's why fake news outperforms real news because studies show that lies spread faster than truth. And it's no surprise that the greatest propaganda machine in history has spread the oldest conspiracy theory in history, the lie that Jews are somehow dangerous. And he returns to that topic several times. We'll get to the Zuckerberg in just a minute, but again, just very consistently good analysis. So off the air before we got to that story, we happened to be talking about that same thing. And I literally called it the oldest conspiracy theory during the break. Yeah. Because Glenn Beck had done a segment where he had George Soros and he literally called him puppet master and had him pulling the strings. Oldest stereotype in world history, right? So deeply, deeply anti-Semitic. Yeah. And so that stuff is being spread around. That was yesterday, by the way. That wasn't, I mean, not that it would be okay in 2007 or something, but that wasn't like back in his heyday. He's still doing that. That was the pro, the program where the president's personal lawyer joined him. That's un, unbelievable, unbelievable. Okay, so I can't believe that anybody would work there. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. So uh, now, in terms of um, their responsibility, well, that's so that's so interesting because it's he. I'm afraid that if you just watch that part, you'll it makes it seem like Facebook and Google, etc., favor lies or favor conspiracy theories. No, what they're doing, to, and I'm trying to be fair. And by the way, I have a conflict I should tell you guys about. YouTube, and Facebook are our biggest partners. Okay, so I want to be clear about that. But what they're doing is they're serving up what people want. The whatever they watch longer, 
and what they're more attracted to. So in a sense, the, the there are real problems with the algorithm. Ramesh Sernavasan, who's on the show all the time, talks about it. He wrote a book called Beyond the Valley, and that there's some of the cultural uh, assumptions of the people who create the algorithm that affects culture throughout the world. It's a really interesting uh, critique uh, of those platforms. On the other hand, what the algorithm is basically doing is uh, serving as a mirror and saying, here, I'll give you what you like. And so part of the problem is humanity. And, and I think we have to be cognizant of that. It's not like, I don't want people to get the wrong impression. In my opinion, there aren't people at Facebook and Google going like, let's put something really evil in here. They're not like Glenn Beck where they're like, okay, put in a thing in the algorithm. If they find it, they'll know that the Jews are the puppet master, right? No, there's no plan like that. Mm. It's just that the algorithm rewards what people are passionate about. And, and sometimes that's fantastic and sometimes it's terrible. But the algorithm does take you to some of the most toxic stuff out there. And, and, and he does go on, I watched the entire thing as well. I really recommend it as John says, it's really worth a watch, not long. Uh, he explains that, he explains that the way it's set up, even if it's just raw algorithmic uh, laboratory stuff, it takes you to some of the most toxic uh, philosophies that are on any platform. Yeah, yeah and I, I guess I agree with you that I don't think that they've pur purposefully put something evil into the algorithm, but like so Dr. Frankenstein didn't set out to create a monster, but when he realized it was a monster, he had to do something about it. They know that they've created a monster and they're saying, it's not on us, free speech or something. I don't know, I'm not gonna do anything. I, yes, I've created something evil. But it doesn't bother me, and while it doesn't bother me, and while I'm just gonna stand back, I'm raking in money based on my inaction for dealing with what I created. It's a, it's a, at best, best, best case scenario, it is amoral, and they are profiting off of something horrendous continuing. Wait, profiting off of something that's amoral? I believe that you just described all corporations. Uh, <laughs> they don't have any morality. Yeah, but I would argue that because they're far bigger than most corporations, because they reach more people, it's even worse when they do it. No, no, I understand that, but guys, what I'm afraid of is if you take that argument to its logical extreme, all you're gonna do is go back to the establishment media. So you're gonna put in so many guardrails that we're gonna go back to the era of acceptable thought. That is the danger, that is absolutely the danger without question. Even, even I found myself, because I think you've got to rein this, this beast in. But even I started thinking as Jenk has just pointed out, which is okay, you start reining it in, where are you gonna end up? They. Uh, and he makes an effective argument, they really need to do something there, Jack. They have so much money. It, it, it seems as though it's not a lot to ask for some of those resources to be directed to, to reigning in some of this, yeah. this toxic beast. Uh, well, maybe he'll get, he gets into that in the next clip. Let, let's go to the por portion where it focuses a little bit more on Facebook. Zuckerberg tried to portray this whole issue as choices around free expression. That is ludicrous. This is not about limiting anyone's free speech. This is about giving people, including some of the most reprehensible people on earth, the biggest platform in history to reach a third of the planet. Freedom of speech is not freedom of reach. Mark Zuckerberg seemed to equate regulation of companies like his to the actions of the most repressive societies. Incredible. This from one of the six people who decide what information so much of the world sees. Zuckerberg at Facebook, Sundar Pichai at Google, at its parent company, Alphabet, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, Brin's ex-sister-in-law, Susan Wojcicki at YouTube, and Jack Dorsey at Twitter. The Silicon Six, all billionaires, all Americans, who care more about boosting their share price than about protecting democracy. This, this is ideological imperialism. Six unelected individuals in Silicon Valley imposing their vision on the rest of the world, unaccountable to any government and acting like they're above the reach of law. It's like we're living in the Roman Empire and Mark Zuckerberg is Caesar. At least that would explain his haircut. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good line. Uh, so look, now he is laying out the problem. We might disagree on exactly how you should deal with it. Uh, but I think that most of us can agree that what they're currently doing is, I think it's fair to say self-serving and it's minimal. They're not doing much. I mean, where do you draw the line? 
I don't know, you've got billions of dollars, maybe you could experiment a little bit. I would start at the very least by actually enforcing the rules that you have, which they don't do, or they change them when they're called out. This whole thing about allowing politicians to lie in ads, originally they had restrictions on that. And when people including Judd Legum showed that no, you're allowing Trump to lie over and over, they just got rid of the standards altogether. They say that you can't have a sort of bot networks of Facebook pages promoting all of your content automatically. Daily Wire is doing that right now. They've got 14 massive pages with huge reach that the only content they put out is spreading the content of Daily Wire. It's explicitly against the rules as they stand right now. That was pointed out to them, they don't do anything because they don't want to offend the right wing. And then they lie about it. Zuckerberg, it was revealed, had a meeting last month with Donald Trump. I believe Peter Thiel, but definitely Donald Trump. And that's during this time where we're talking about his approach to Trump's advertising. Did he reveal that? That he was having secretive meetings with Donald Trump? No. Yeah. And he's profiting mightily while this is going on. So people are gonna misinterpret me saying on the other hand as me not agreeing with Sasha Baron Cohen. I, that's not the case. That normally on talk shows and, and, I, and I do this very, very often, strong opinions. I'm positive about certain things, right? On this one, I'm really not sure. I think it's a very difficult problem. Uh, so, but I, I will say, I think that the larger issues, I think we're kind of missing or we've got the wrong focus. The larger issues that are that corporations have now become the new nation state. So they're unaccountable to almost all the governments. They've captured the United States government completely through campaign donations, and they've captured many other governments. So that's why they're all unaccountable. We're just seeing the ramifications of Facebook and Google, etc., more because they're more part of our lives. We almost never interact with ExxonMobil. We almost never interact with the other giant companies that have taken control of our government. So, and we have no rules to rein in corporations. We only wrote one line of code for them, maximize profit. Mm -hmm. That's the core of the problem. It's just that when you take it into social media, it creates these other ailments that we can see with our own eyes. So I, I wish we would go and tackle that problem because I think it would fix a lot of other issues. First, and then that would also affect mm. Facebook, Google, etc. And I also don't want to get into the demonization. And here again, I'll admit a bias. I at least know Susan from YouTube. She did no, there's no look, it's my best guess, and you can say, hey, you know her, so you're full of crap or whatever it is, right? Perfectly lovely person. There's no crazy hidden agenda of like, I will control the world and I'll put and I'll drive people to the uh, you know, to the wrong places for wrong purposes. No, look, Facebook is appears on the surface to be incredibly right wing, right? But but I don't see that at the other companies. Uh, it, it's much harder to discern. Twitter's got some problems with. Yeah, I hear you. It's just Facebook harder to stuff. discern. We don't really know, right? And so, and I've never sensed that in there in my interactions. Again, I might be biased because we have a relationship. On the other hand, um, if I thought there was a bias, I'd be the first guy yelling about it. Right, and, and you all know that. And so I, I, I think, and they're in a very difficult spot. So the minute, and so that leads to the second larger problem, which is there's, we have an imbalance in this country where one party lies all the time. But even the mainstream media, I mean, you wanna criticize Facebook and Google, I hear you, it's a really fair debate. But how about the New York Times and Washington Post that takes Republican lies and equates them to things that are true? So I can't tell, Republicans say this, Democrats say that. Now on Trump, they've been better. But during the Iraq war, during the Bush era, during the enhanced interrogations, during Mitch McConnell's reign throughout all this time, I can't tell who's doing the obstruction, it's 50-50, I'm neutral, right? Well, then you're, you equated lies to the truth, and that is terribly damaging. Mm -hmm. So there are larger issues at hand that I think are bigger cancers. That doesn't mean they don't affect Facebook and Google, they do. And it doesn't mean that those companies aren't also contributing in other ways to the problems. But I don't think the answer is simple. And I think if we just say like, okay, rein people in, who and how, it's really hard. Yeah. That's my sense of it. No, even discerning the lies is hard because most of the lies, uh, or, or certainly a bulk of the lies, exist in a gray area. So it is, it, it is hard. Uh, I guess all I was saying before is, and I think all that that uh, Sasha Baron Cohen is saying, it sounds like John's saying a flavor of it as well, is 
devote some resources to it and try to solve that riddle. It is gonna be hard, and you may make a mistake, but but try to solve it. The other thing I would say is, uh, Jack is 100% right about something. The We noticed this, but the, the media mergers and the corporatocracy merger mania that occurred a late 20th century and uh, early this century, that has created a handful of beasts. So if you're gonna tackle these guys, you also have to go to, after the other corporate beasts. And, and I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, and last thing is, uh, look, even if I disagree with parts of what Sasha Baron Cohen is saying, I deeply respect him for bringing up this really important issue that we should all have a national and, and even international conversation about and come to some sort of conclusion. Because right now, yes, there are things that go bump in the night, and certainly on the internet, and we're all throwing our hands up going, I, I guess there's nothing that could be done about it. Maybe that is the answer, but maybe it's not. And we should all, you know, make a concerted effort to figure out what can be done. Yeah. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.